Well, good evening. We're glad you're back with us on this study of Gideon and how God changed this man to be a mighty warrior. But obviously Gideon didn't make it easy for God, nor did God make it easier for Gideon. <laughs> Isn't that just like our Lord? He'll use us and stretch us and mold us to be the very best that we can be for his glory. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and get right into our study. Father, these next few minutes, they're yours. Father, I pray that you would help us to understand um, what you did for Gideon and, Lord, how it applies to our life and what you will do for us as you shape us and mold us to conform to the image of your Son, Jesus. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to Judges chapter 6. Judges 6. And I want you to look at verse number 33. All right? <clears throat> so listen, we, we were last week, if you remember... God called Gideon and, and called him a mighty warrior, although everything before that th didn't even make sense that he was in that mold. But yet God prophesied and said, this is who you will be. And if you remember, he started the ball rolling by, by getting rid of the, of, the, of the altars to the foreign gods to bring back the true God. And, and God supernaturally intervened, even using Gideon's father for that. So, now Gideon is on a roll and he's going to continue on. So look at verse 33 of Judges chapter number 6. And it says, Now all the Midianites and the Amal Amalekites and the other eastern peoples joined forces across over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Get to that in a moment. And he blew a trumpet summoning the Abysseites to follow him. And he sent messengers throughout Manasseh, calling them to arms, and also into Asher, Zebulon, and Nephtali, so that they too went up to meet them. All right. So here is this invading army. And again, that, remember, we learned about that, that this was not an unusual thing. This happened to the Israelites. But now Gideon, by the inspiration of God, was going to do something about it. And there's a key phrase. It said that the Spirit of the Lord came upon. And I love the Hebrew rendering of that because it means to be dressed, to be clothed. Gideon was clothed in the Spirit of God. Now, in this, now we're on the East Coast for those that are watching on the West Coast, but it's rather cold, rather cold out. And if we're going to go outside, you have to be prepared because if not, you're going to freeze and it's going to be bad. So you have to be clothed in preparation to go outside and do what needs to be done. It's totally separate, same situation. God can't ask you to do something when he's not going to prepare you. He's already promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. He will guide us. He will move us. He's going to hold true to his word. So anything he calls you to do, he will give you what you need to do it. And so it says here that, that Gideon was prepared because the Spirit of God came upon him. And when he sounded the ram's horn, which is a, a wonderful, the shofar, to cry out that something great was going to happen. The Israelites gathered together. There was something there. You know, again, I've been talking about the fact that you know, once this pandemic all subsides and we can all together come back, um, there is something special about being in the house of God. And that's why I, I, I encourage you, if you're able to physically, um, if you're able to come and wear your mask and feel safe being in the house of God on Sundays, as opposed to watching online, um, I recommend you do it if you can. Again, I don't want to rush you. I'm not forcing you. But there's just something special about being in the presence of God together that means something. And I don't want you to lose that. So again, you be safe. You make your decisions, okay? But if it's little things that are stopping you, think about it and say, okay, let me see what God can do. Until that happens, you keep watching. You keep listening because the Spirit of God, there's no question, is there. Okay, I want to make sure that's clear. So here is this group of men that came together and they're about to go to battle. But verse 36 occurs. And verse 36 says, Gideon said to God, 
If you save Israel, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened, verse 38 says. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Now, understand, the dew coming in, that's not unusual, okay? What's unusual is that the ground was not wet around it, but just the fleece. That's something that had to be supernatural. Now, uh, the original says, uh, do not be angry with me. I love that part. For some reason, um, verse 36, they're not putting that in. They will later. But he said, do not be angry with me. See, we got to remember something very important. Verse 39, do not be angry with me. Gideon got his answer. But he was still concerned. He said, I've got to make sure this is God. I've got to make sure this is God. And so look at verse 39. It says, let me, do not be angry with me, and let me make one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece, but this time make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. And that night God did so. Only the fleece was dry, and all the ground was covered with dew. Again, not unusual for that to happen as far as the, the dew coming down. That's what I want to make clear. But what's important is that Gideon said, God, make the fleece wet, the ground dry. And then said, make the ground wet and make the fleece dry. This is the reality about testing. Testing God's word. Now, there's nothing wrong. Now, let me let me preface this because we'll get into the rest of this in a moment, okay? By saying, um, God has intimated, he has given the fact, says, put me to the test. Let me show you what I can do. And some would get concerned and say, wait, 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 wait. Um, th then what would be any different between, you know, the devil testing Jesus and Gideon testing God? Well, there's a big difference, and it has everything to do with the intention of the mind and the heart. You see, the devil wanted the miracles to be performed out of an abundance of, of, of trying to show God up. But Gideon was testing God out of abundance of fear. And it was a degree of mercy that God showed Gideon because he knew his heart. See, there are times that God will ask us to step out in faith to do something, and there'll be times that we're scared, nervous, wonder what will happen. And I'd like to say every time God is going to, you know, uh, let me put it to you this way. I remember for me growing up riding a bike, okay? I can remember my father holding on to the back of that bike. I remember that. He said, Dad, hold on, hold on, hold on. The confidence I had is when Dad held on. And he said, all right, but the only thing I ask is don't you dare look back at me. You keep your eyes forward. And there was a reason, because very quietly as I was writing, he would start to lift his hand, and he would let go. And I would be riding the bike alone. But if my fear was that he let go, if I kept doing this, Dad, Dad, don't let go, Dad, I would not focus. I think God was being very intentional with Gideon and he was being very merciful to Gideon because he had called him and said, let me establish a strength so that this man knows that I am God. There's many times in our lives, friends, that he will establish things in our life. Some people may need more signs than others. That's God's mercy and compassion. Some may grab it right away and we say, praise God. Some may need a little bit more. And we have to be very careful with them. We have to be very uh, compassionate also with them. And remind them, no, no, don't give up. Keep going. God will do what he's going to do. So God performed this miracle uh, so that his glory can be manifested and his confidence can be shown 
in Gideon. So look at verse ch uh, chapter 7 and look at verse number 1. It says, Now early in the morning, Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was north of them in the valley of the hill of Morah. And the Lord said to Gideon, verse 2, You have too many men. Right there, that, that, that would scare me to death. You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. And he would be right. So announce to the army, army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. Wow. You imagine going into a battle and a fight with 32,000? Now it's still lower than the 135, but that's still, you know, one to every three. Big, you know, okay, I could do something with this. Strength in numbers. And God says, Gideon, there's too many people here. So here's this first time general, if you will, who says, okay, guys, if you're scared, now normally in the armed forces, from what I understand, they've never been in, but... Um, I would understand that he would say this. If you're scared, move forward. Don't let fear stop you. Here God was saying, we're going to start cutting people out by saying, if you're scared, if your mind's not in it, if you're not even focused, don't even come. Go home. You can't help. And there were actually 22,000 of them. It wasn't even, it was more than half of them were scared to death. They weren't soldiers. And only 10,000 or so stayed. Friends, this is amazing what God is doing. Let's continue on, then I'll bring this to a little bit of a uh, together. But it says in verse 4, But God, the Lord said to Gideon, There's still too many men. Are you kidding me? Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. I'm sure Gideon's not excited about this, guys, at all. Uh, he's saying, I'll thin them out more. I hope none of them give in. And if I say, this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took them down to the water, okay? And the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as dogs lap for those who kneel down to drink. Think of that picture. If the water's here, he's saying, Take notice of the ones who go into the water, the heads down, and just start, you know, licking up the water, as opposed to those who bring it in. Now, there's a thought and a theory here that uh, the Lord separated them, and I, I get the idea, and I think it has some credence to it, that the ones who, who knew enough to do this were ones that would keep their wits about them, that want to know what was going on because their head was down. Their enemy could just take them out like that, but if they were bringing it up, they could see what's happening. That's the good news. You had men that, that were thinking that way. The bad news on a human scale <laughs> is found in verse 6. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. Here it comes. Verse 7, And the Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands and let all the others go home. We go from 32,000 soldiers to 300 against 135,000 people. I, I, I don't want you to put your super spiritual hat on. I want you to think in purely human terms for a moment. And Gideon, who had been called the mighty warrior, had now had to release all of these men to go home. And he was left with 300. There are times we do not understand what God will do. There, We are in a numbers-conditioned mindset in this world. The more you have, the better it is. In a human term, it is. If you're um, filling up a stadium, which Lord willing, one day will be done again, um, 
there's more revenue that's going to come in with, uh, let's say, a stadium for football has 78,000 people it could fill. If you're filled to capacity, at 78,000 that have paid money, so all that income, 78,000 that will go to concessions, more income, 78,000 is a whole lot louder than 78 people, and we've seen that today uh, through football. Um, there's just something about the amount that makes it very exciting. And God is doing the verse here, reverse. Why? Because he said in the beginning, I don't want Israel to take credit for what I'm doing. And this is why we have to be careful in our lives that we do not take the credit for what God is doing. Yes, God will use people. He'll use situations. I have told you I am still a, 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 a fan on this, that everything that we've discovered about this COVID disease and, and uh, vaccine and, and medicine and everything, everything we've known, I believe God has released that information to men and women to be able to help us. I, I honestly believe that, that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Now, uh, the medicine is not perfect. I'm not intimating that. But the idea is that every gift, everything we receive first comes from God so that we don't take credit ourselves. Those who don't care about God will say, I did this. I suggest that we look and say, God allowed this. God revealed this to others. And that's where then the praise goes back to him. So the fact that God's going to do something great there, let's go with it. Come on, let's wrap this up. Um, now the camp, this is verse 8, Now the camp of Midian lay low below him in the valley. And during the night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up. Go down against the camp because I'm going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. Okay? So he says, if you're still afraid, I want you to go down to the camp and I want you to listen. Again, maybe Gideon saying, great, God's going to allow me to hear some strategy. If they come from the left, I can come from the right or, or whatever it would be. I'm sure he's excited about that fact. So it says, He and Pura, his servant, went down to the outpost of the camp. And the Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern peoples that settled in the valley, thick as locusts. <clears throat> the camels could not be more counted as the sand of the seashore. Incredible um, view of what's about to happen. But here's what God does. Verse 13. God arrived just as a man, I'm sorry, Gideon, let me re rephrase that, sorry. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. Now, this is the enemy. Understand, this is now he snuck in, he and Pura are there, and they're listening to the enemy, and they find this one man talking. He said, I had a dream, he's telling his friend. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend, the enemy, responded, This could be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. This is the enemy saying, We're done. That's not what he expected to hear. But how did Gideon respond? Verse 15, Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation. He bowed down and worshipped. He returned to the camp in Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given a Midianite camp to your hands. You don't have to listen to the enemy. All you need to listen to is the Word of God. You take the Word of God in to your life. You read it. It encourages you. It helps you understand. You don't have to worry about the enemy strategy. You have God who's going to deliver them into your hands as you follow what he says. <clears throat> That's in any stretch of life that you have. Don't give in. Don't give in to fear. He, he brought it down from 32,000, <coughs> excuse me, to 300. And then Gideon said, God has given me the confidence. This is amazing. And next week, we, we, we see how God continues his unconventional ways of leading him. But let me just leave you with this one thought. God was tested by Gideon, right? Give me a sign, give me a sign. But then God tested 
Gideon. God came through for Gideon, which was going to be no doubt. The fleece, the ground. But Gideon obeyed God. There are times God's going to tell you, friends, trust me. Trust me. It may not be exactly perfect. You may not understand, but trust me and watch what I will do. Trust him and watch what he will do. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this precious word. Thank you for the truth of Gideon. And Father, we look forward to hearing more and more about what this man did um, and what you did through him. So Father, today we ask you tonight, just teach us, Lord, to trust you, even when things seem so different, so backward, and they don't make sense. Teach us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week. All right, we're going to continue the story. It's going to be a... a it's going to be amazing what Gideon goes through next. God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.